Hey everybody, it's Tim Hepworth here with Fly Fishing Boulder Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. And we are doing another quick tie today and we are gonna be tying up the Boogie Man, awesome streamer. All right, this quick tie is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. We are gonna be tying out of our kits. We're tying from season five, episode three. If you still want a kit, you can still grab one. Head on over to our website, www.flyfishingboulder.com backslash TNLS5 and you can still grab a kit today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. You hit that little bell button, it's also gonna notify you every other time we post a video. All right, let's head on over the vise and get started. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and grab one of our hooks. So what we're tying on right now <clears throat> is a Daiichi 2461, and this is in a one-aught size. It's a long streamer hook. Okay, this is gonna be the first hook, the back end of the fly first, as always on these articulated streamers. I am tying with some UTC 140 in black. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in here and let's lay down a good base of thread wraps. Start it somewhere up by the eye. I'm gonna put this a little deeper into my Norvice. So I can just whip this up. I'm gonna add some thread all the way back down into the bend. Bring it back up. I'm just gonna lay a nice thread base down there so those materials we're gonna put on next have something to bind onto. Then I'm gonna bring my thread right back to about the barb. Go ahead and grab out of your kit, or if you're tying from home, grab from your materials. We're gonna grab a chunk of marabou. So the color scheme for this fly today is gonna be in black. So we're gonna grab a, a good chunk of marabou like so. I'm gonna measure it being roughly the length of that hook shank, roughly. Set that back to where I left my thread. Switch hands, do a nice gathering wrap. Secure that fly as such, and start taking thread wraps forward. Now I'm just gonna use, um, the underside of this remaining feather to kind of create a little bit of bulk as I go down the hook shank. So you can see here, I'm just gonna basically attach it down to one side or the other. When I get near the eye, I'm just gonna come in here, trim it out, and then make sure that base of the feather is secured down. When I come back up the fly, or sorry, back down the fly to where I tied that in, and we're gonna tie in our next material. So next one we're gonna tie in, you can tie this with uh, maybe a saddle hackle like we used last week something in that kind of size range, or a schlappen is what the actual recipe crawl, calls for. This is what we're gonna tie it with in today. Start up at the tip, pull some of that fiber back down, turn it over so that the underside of the feather is pointed rearward down the fly, and come in here and secure this right in front of that marabou, okay? Make sure that's good and secured. I'm even just gonna lay that little piece of the tip down, make sure that's all good and secured. Don't worry about all that bulk we have underneath this because that just creates a little profile. It's not gonna be seen. Now we're gonna head on over to our large size cactus chenille. Lots of nice color in this guy. We're gonna strip off a few of those feathers, or a few of those fibers, sorry, so you can see it exposes just that little bit of chenille partials, uh, sorry, particles in the middle. And we're gonna take those strands and we're gonna lay them on top of the hook shank, gather them, secure them down nice and tight. Okay, work our thread forward, this time right to the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little half hitch in that. I'm gonna set my thread off to the side on my bobbin cradle. And now I'm gonna start wrapping my cactus chenille forward. So I'm gonna do a full wrap all the way around first before starting to head forward. And as I go forward, I'm just gonna pull the fibers back so they stack nicely all the way forward kind of pulling them back each time I wrap forward. We're gonna take this all the way up to just behind the eye of the hook. Leave yourself a little bit of space up there. Bring that thread back in. Thread wrap behind, thread wrap in front as always to secure that material. Do that twice and you can go ahead and trim out that cactus chenille. Make sure it's out of the way. Gonna take a couple more thread wraps to make sure that's all locked in. I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna do a little half hitch. Set my bobbin off to the side on my cradle. And now I'm gonna come to our slapping. okay? So all I'm gonna do is exactly the same thing. I'm gonna start palmering it forward. And as I do, I'm just kind of making sure that all the pieces of the feather are standing up nicely. But it's not an exact science and it doesn't need to be. Just wrap that forward. We're gonna leave it basically right where we left that cactus chenille. We're more or less trying to make sure we're just not wrapping back over top of any of the pieces. I'm gonna bring my thread back in. 
Same thing, thread wrap on one side in front, thread wrap behind, repeat that process a couple times. Make sure we have that good and secure because we don't want this to come undone. Then we can come in here and trim it out. And I'm just gonna fold everything back, take a few thread wraps to make sure that's good and secure, not going anywhere. And now I wanna come in here, <clears throat> I can come in here with a little brush and just make sure I, when I brush it, it's just gonna pull all those pieces of that feather apart, kind of get them headed rearward down the fly. Okay, looking like so, very good so far. Now one of the best parts of this fly that I love so much and the appearance that it gives is our mallard flank. Okay, we're gonna put a mallard flank feather right on top. This gives the appearance of the top of the back of a fish. You can kind of vary your coloring scheme. I like these tan ones, they're barred, kind of looks like a, maybe a little brown trout's back or a stickleback back. Okay, we're gonna set it right on top. We want it to extend just into the tail slightly, not too far, just a little bit. Make sure it's right on top of the hook shank and that it's not going down to one side or the other. This one's important that it stays up on top. Go ahead, get some thread wraps on top of it. Take your hand off, make sure you got it good and level. If it's not perfect, adjust it. Take a few more thread wraps back to make sure it's secure. Lift up the tag end, make sure you get some wraps underneath that. That's gonna lock it in, keep it from twisting. Then we can go ahead and trim it out. Now all I'm gonna do is take a few more thread wraps, secure, trim the base of that feather up a little more. Doesn't have to be super clean. I'm gonna put in a little half hitch until I can find my whip finish here. Make sure I save all that work. And now let's do a quick little whip finish. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my favorite UV resin, which as you know is that Solar Res Bone Dry. Very thin, really like this. It'll soak into this material quite nicely. A drop of it on there, let that soak in for a half a second. Come over and grab my UV light, hear that. And this is what we should be looking at for this back end of the fly. Okay, we're gonna pop that out of the vise. We'll set it aside for the time being. We're gonna get to work on the front half of the fly. So I'm gonna go back in and grab another hook. We're using that same hook we used in the back end we're gonna use for the front end. Make sure we get it good and secure in the vise. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my thread again, start it up by the eye. Gonna work some more of a thread base down just like we did before. Just take that all the way back into the bend and back forward. And this time we're gonna come up about a couple of eye lengths behind the eye itself. And we're gonna go ahead and tie in our dumbbell eyes. So we got some of these lead eyes here. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna lay it Kind of across as it naturally wants to like so it wants to kind of sit on that crux we're going to take our first few thread wraps just to hold it in place then we can switch directions so right now it looks like that we can switch directions and pull it over from the other side too we just start taking some cross wraps either direction then we'll throw in some figure eights which is exactly like it sounds this looks like a figure eight so around one side around the other take some just around the eyes itself and then we want to take those eyes and we want to spin them so they're on the bottom. Where the lead eyes sit is the way it's going to swim. So we want the hook down on this fly. Take a few more thread wraps, making sure everything's good and secure. When you're happy with it, we'll take some thread wraps further back now. Leave it about mid shank. Now in your kit or if you have some at home, we're just using a piece of mono. You could use uh, intruder wire or anything like that. We're going to secure the back piece to the front. So I'm gonna lay this on top of the hook shank, take some thread wraps. We're really gonna put quite a few down, nice tight wraps, securing this all the way back, trying to keep it right on top of the hook shank. And we're gonna take it just into the edge of the bend. I'm gonna come back forward, just really securing that in place. And we'll bring it back there again. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab a couple of the beads that you have in your kit as well any type of beads here craft beads whatever you like can work you can use a couple use one either way we're just basically tying with some beads to hold that back out of the way so hopefully it doesn't come back and foul hook um, on the on the back portion of this fly then I'm gonna go stick this through the eye of the hook the back portion I'm gonna bring it back forward and I'm gonna slide that back through that bead 
And it all kind of depends on how stiff the line or the intruder wire you're using. But most of them are stiff enough that it's going to hold that back in place. I'm going to leave that loop a little ways back. Pinch down. Take, start taking some thread wraps up that mono or the wire. And this time I'm going to flip it over, double it over. And then I can snip it out. Okay. Get that good and secured down. And I'm going to bring my thread back. This back portion of the fly. Now, some people would like to put some marabou back in here, but we're going to tie as close to the original pattern as possible. So we're going to leave this as is. Um, and we're just going to start working on that front portion again, which this time we're going to go straight to tying in our marabou, or sorry, tying in our schlappen or your saddle hackle. We'll tie that in first. Same thing, underside back down the fly. We'll kind of secure that tag like we did the last time. Bring my thread back down. Go ahead and grab that cactus chenille again. The next portion of that. Again, peel off a few of those pieces so you can expose that core. Then get that core secured down. Now this time we're gonna wrap forward to just behind the eyes. I'm gonna throw in a little half hitch. Hit that save button. And now I'm gonna start wrapping forward with my chenille. Same thing, kind of trying to pull all the little pieces back as we go forward. This is a nice bulky looking cactus chenille. It has lots of flash in it. It's going to look great in the water. Okay, we're going to bring that, leaving a boat. One of those lead eyes spaced behind the current lead eyes that we have in there. Wraps in front, wraps behind. Make sure that's good and secure, and then we can trim it out. Really wrap down, make sure it's good and secure. Now we're gonna take our schlappen and we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did last time. Making sure we try to pull those pieces of the feather apart and make sure we're not trapping any of them as we move forward. But we will brush it out kind of again. So we should be able to prevent most of that. Just gonna palmer that forward through that chenille. And we're gonna leave it right by those eyes and secure it off again. Wraps behind, wraps in front. Go ahead in and trim it out. Again, take a few thread wraps, really make sure that's locked in place. And I'm gonna take my brush like I did before, brush it all a little bit. Then we're gonna go over and repeat what we did in the back. We're gonna grab another um, one of our mallard flanks. I'm gonna peel a little bit of this one off. It's a little long. And this time, when we lay it on top, we want it to extend just slightly into that back portion so that it overlaps on the on the uh, the schlapp or sorry on the mallard flank we have in the back. We just want that to overlap slightly, right up on top of the hook. Tie that in place. Secure it down. Lift up the underside of the stem, a few more wraps, and we can trim it out. Super close here, guys. Now all we're gonna work on is the head of the fly, which might be some of the more complicated portion. I just have a little clip on there to hold everything back out of the way. Now, what we're working with, we are working with sculpin wool, okay? Now, you wanna grab a chunk of it. It's about an inch, inch and a half long. And what I like to do to kind of fluff it up is I'm just gonna keep pulling it apart and stacking it. And it almost like builds air into it, makes it nice and fluffy. That's kind of how we're going to gain some shape and fluffiness to this because that's kind of how the head's going to finish. So I'm going to find that halfway mark in it. We're going to start by putting this on the top. I'm going to put it right like so, cut it in half, put a thread wrap over top of it. A couple thread wraps forward, and then I'm going to pull it back. I'm just going to move that forward just a smidge. You want to tie this first one in pretty much right behind the eyes. Pull it back, a couple thread wraps. It's gonna look pretty poofy as we tie it in, and then we'll do some trimming after. Now we're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna repeat that process on the underside. Same thing, I got some here. I'm gonna pull it apart a couple times. Stack it back on top of each self. Lay that just behind those dumbbell eyes. Secure it in place. 
couple wraps, pull it out of the way. We're gonna flip this back up top again. I'm gonna advance just in front of the eyes. Okay, so that's our first portion. I'm gonna grab another clump. And this time I'm gonna lay it again, kind of doing that same halfway part. I'm gonna lay it on the back like so. But this time I'm gonna, on the underside of the fly, I'm reaching my thread behind the dumbbell eye. And on this side, I'm gonna reach the thread on this side of the underside of the dumbbell eye. Make sure that stays on top and then pull it down. And that, what that did is it just filled up that space on top of the dumbbell eyes. That's kind of the harder spot to fill. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down and repeat that exact same thing on the underside. So I'm gonna lay it 50-50, take my thread, go behind the dumbbell eye in the back, same thing here, behind, and pull down. You see it stands that up and fills in that gap. I flip it back up this way again, doing really good. Now we're gonna work in front of the dumbbell eyes. So again, pull apart, stack, do that same 50-50. Fill that space upside down. We got a couple more to do, but we are almost there. That's going to fill the underside of that gap. And pull it up. Now I'm just looking for any kind of deficiency where I'm missing any, where it's not as bulky. I'm going to do one more small right on top to kind of fill in that space, and this will be the last one I do. This is more about kind of eyeing it, gauging how much you think you need, but you want to end up pretty close to the front of the fly with the wool. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take a few wraps, if I can, back on the wool, kind of helps hold it back out of the way and create a bit of a thread dam down to the eye. Just holding it back out of the way. And from here, I'm going to do a quick whip finish. And then we're just going to do a little trimming. Whip finish once, whip finish twice. Okay, add your favorite resin up here at the head. I'm gonna do just a small dab of it. I know that's very secure, but it's never hurts to add just a little touch of some resin. Let that soak in a half sec. Hit it with the light. All right, guys, let's do a little bit of trimming and we'll get on with it. <clears throat> just note that when you're trimming wool, it is actually pretty hard on your scissors. So if you got a little crummier pair or a pair of Dana's, maybe do that instead. I like to stand it all up so it looks like a big mohawk. Now I'm going to trim to shape. So I want, your shape is totally up to you, but I'll show you this one again here. Okay. I like that shape there. I want it to be a little bit pointed the nose, leaving some of that wool to go back over that mallard flank, but the shape is up to you. Just remember, you can't put it back on once you've trimmed it off. So I'm going to make my first cut at a bit of an angle towards the back. Do a little bit of the same again on the side. This is my first kind of big general cuts. Now I'm gonna flip it upside down. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, a pretty steep angle on this one. Cutting that out. Trim just a little more. I like that bottom already. I like how that's sitting. Trim a little bit more. And now from this point, all, all the trimming you're doing is just to satisfy the appearance that you want. So if you want to round it a bit, if you want to take a little bit of the shape or the size out of it, that's totally up to you. I like a pretty big head on this fly, but you do want it to be trimmed down in a way that it's still going to look good in the water. Take a little bit more off this top, off the sides. I like to moisten the fingers just a little bit and pull back on it. It's going to give me a little better appearance of what it's going to look like. There you have it, guys. I like that boogeyman. I suggest you keep a few of these in your box. They are definitely productive. All right, guys, that is the boogeyman. I'll pull that off there. You can see the nice back on the fly. That's a good one. It's pretty. All right, guys. <clears throat> it's been Tim Hepworth with Fly Fisher Border Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. This has been the Boogeyman, another quick tie. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to this video. We want to thank Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for bringing us this quick tie. Till next week.